Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In, pre in the previous video, we created the Zestan store and as you can see that uh, we have the default state and then we have already created the store using the create function from Zestan. Now, now is the time when we go ahead and uh, write a function that will basically be listening to an event whenever the user clicks on one of these filters. We want to be able to grab the ID of that particular uh, term and then make a REST API call to get the results with that particular filter. So there are a few things we need to do. We need to basically store this information into the state and then every time the user selects more terms, we'll keep adding those IDs to the store so that we can construct a REST API call with all of those terms IDs so that we can get the results which, is, which are the post that belong to those terms. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to go back to the search and then index.js. Inside of this, remember we had the Aquila checkbox accordion child, which is which is this one right here, Aquila accordion child. Okay, and this is the custom web component class which is Aquila checkbox accordion child which is this guy right here inside of this we have a subscribe method now what happens is anytime there's a change in the state okay so you know we have this default state right here so whatever the state key value pays is or, or if you add more key value pays in the state later on so anytime there's a change in the state value the subscribe method gets called so the subscribe method is actually part of the store so this is actually available in the store itself this function okay and whatever function you pass inside of this subscribe method as a parameter gets called anytime the state changes okay so let's say that filters the value of filters changes or filter id changes um, or the page number changes number of pages changes anything that changes here in the state uh, this function is automatically get called which eventually will call uh, the function that you pass over here so we're going to create a function called update this is going to get access to the entire state, whatever the current value of that state is, which is the updated value. And then over here, we check if the input element is available. If not, return. We'll pull the filters from the current state. So we'll pull these filters from the current state. We get the input key, input value. So the input key will be the category. The value will be the ID. So the category will be the taxonomy. Then we get the selected filters for the current key, which is from this, whatever the input value is, whatever the filter value is. And then we get the parent element, and the parent content element. And then in case if the current input value is amongst the selected filters, then check it and set the attributes and styles to open the accordion. Otherwise, uncheck it. Okay. So that's what happens in case whatever checkbox user selected, whatever term user selected, if it exists in the state already, then check it, otherwise uncheck it. Okay. So, so as you can see that the attribute which is active is being set here. Parent content element height is being set to auto. But in case if the current ele input element is not amongst the se selected filters, then we're just unchecking it and removing that active attribute. Okay. So that means that it'll get closed. The accordion will get closed like so in the else condition. Okay, now next thing we do is to this input element, which is this one right here, this one, okay. To this input element, whenever the user clicks on it, we're gonna call the handle checkbox input click. That's why we're adding the event there. And this function basically gets the add filter and delete fil filter function from the state so in our state, we have we already had initialize, so we uncommented add filter and delete filter, which we will create in a moment. Uh, this gets access to the target element, and then the filter key. So target element will be the input element. It'll get the data key, which is the taxonomy name in this case category, and then for tags, it'll be uh, post underscore tag. If it's checked, call the add filter, which means pass that information, which is the value, the ID of that term and then the taxonomy to the add filter function. So then that add filter function will put that information in the state. 
So if there were already some filters selected, it's gonna push more information on it, push, push more terms into it. In case if it was already selected, let's say if, if in this case it's already selected, in, th in that case we wanna uncheck it. So in that case we want to remove that from the state. So the job of delete filter is basically to take the key, which is taxonomy, the value is the term ID and just remove it from the state. So that's what's happening here. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and create the add filter and delete filter functions. We will do that inside of the data.js. So we'll go to our pull request and then copy these two functions. All right, so we added those two functions and I'll explain to you what they do. So add filter function will take the current selection. It'll pull the root URL, the filters from the state, and then it'll take the key and value from the current selection. So we, we would have already passed the key and value, which is the taxonomy and the term ID. And then is going to create an object called new filters. It'll take the previous filter in case if the user had already added some filters, it'll store that inside of new filters so we can append more terms into it because we don't, we don't want to override it. If there were already some terms that were selected, we just want to add more to it. So then we'll create a constant called filter values inside of this. We'll get that particular filter and then filter keys, value, value. And then inside of the new filter, we'll say new filter equals new filter and then key and then whatever the new value. So basically we're spreading the old value and putting the new value. So that way it'll, the new filter will now contain the old plus the new value of the user selection. Then this function is gonna get URL with the filters. So basically this adds the filter selection to URL. So if you take a look, what this is doing is it's taking the root URL, looping through it and using the search param method it's just setting those in the URL. So we already have a REST API URL. We want to be able to add those filters uh, with their IDs into the URL so we can make a REST API request and get the post with those term IDs. That's all that's happening here. So we get the new URL, then we update the URL. Okay, so we want to be able to update the URL. So let's create that function also quickly. So I'll add that over here. The job of the update URL function is basically take the URL and then put that inside of the, uh, in case if it's already available in the history, okay, then we say window.history.pushState and then path and then URL, okay. Um, otherwise, send the user to that particular URL, okay. So what we're trying to do over here, we don't want the page to get refreshed. So we have something available in Windows history called push state method. Push states allows us to change the state of the URL without having to refresh the page. So if that feature is available in the window, because some browsers may not have that available. Uh, if it is available, just update the URL uh, so that there's no page refresh. And then if it isn't, then just send the user to that URL, okay? So that's, that's all that happens in the update URL. So it updates your URL over here, th this thing, okay? Next up, in the add filter, so it updates the URL, then it updates the state with the new data. So the get state method of the store, the job of that is to get the um, state and set state job is to set the state, okay? Um, so we pass the object. So this URL will contain the REST API URL, so, so we'll pass the URL, the current selection, filter will be equal to new filters, page number equals one. Loading will be true because we want to be able to show the loading while the result is being fetched. And then we call the get result function, we'll create this function in a moment. Similarly, in delete filters, you take the current selection, you pull the filters in the root URL from state, you get the key and value, new filters, loop through it, previous filter and delete the value in the question in question. If the match is found, delete it from the array. So we take a look at the existing filters. If the value exists, we remove it using the slice, splice method. Then we set the value equal to the new filter. So the new filter will contain all the filters excluding the one that was that we're trying to delete. 
And then we also delete the empty keys. Otherwise, what happens is that uh, sometimes we have null and undefined. So we want to make sure that we don't have any null and undefined in that new filters. Okay. And then we get the URL with filter, same as what we had done in the add filter function. We update the URL with the new updated value. And then we set the state. Okay. And then we call the get result function. So now that we have uh, gone ahead and added this add filter and delete filter basis, when the user clicks on, on this particular checkbox, if they click it, um, if we check, uh, this gets checked and we call the add filter, if they uncheck it, then we call the delete filter to delete that particular term information from the state. We also want to make a request to get the result. That's what's going to happen in the get result function. So let's add that. Okay, so I think we'll stop here. And in the next video, we're going to go ahead and add the get result function. All right, so I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.